Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like this to be a celebration. I want us to feel good tonight. Because, feel good because we live in an era when the most important problem in logic has been solved. And when I say logic, I don't mean making computers do things or uh, those maths prizes for, for maths problems. I'm talking about an abstract problem that we all face when we want to know stuff, whether as a scientist or just as an ordinary person. So, examples. Forensics. You know what evidence you'd see if the suspect is guilty and what evidence you'd see if they're being stitched up. You want to evaluate the evidence that you have in front of you fairly. Uh, astronomy. If you knew the shape of a galaxy, you could work out what radio image it would give. You have the signal from your radio telescope and you want to infer from that back to the characteristics of the galaxy. Uh, another example, flirting. You know how someone would behave if they're really into you or if they're just very friendly and a bit asthmatic. You <laughs> meet someone and you want to draw the right conclusion. You don't want a misunderstanding there. So these are all examples of something called the reverse inference problem. Um, to assume something and draw conclusions from it, that's direct, that's straightforward. But all the interesting traffic goes the other way. You've observed something, you want to know, is this evidence, what's it evidence for? Is it strong evidence? Will anybody help us? Will anybody solve this problem for us? Not all the individual little problems, but show us how to solve the general problem. Show us how to do reverse inference, even though some people said it's not a solvable problem. Well, in 1761, an Anglican vicar called Thomas Bayes died, and among his effects, was found a paper which a friend took and published. And this addressed a problem to do with billiard balls. So if you imagine drawing a line across the billiard table and scatter the balls, and say nine are on one side of the line and six are on the other, could you estimate from that the position where the line was drawn? Now Bayes gave us a worked example of that. So who cares? Well, it's a reverse inference problem. If it's a worked example of that, we could take the abstract form and we could apply it to all the other reverse inference problems. And the abstract form of the problem can be summed up in Bayesian equations, of which that's a simple. So that there is the solution, in a nutshell, to the reverse inference problem. You could put that on a t-shirt. There are more famous scientific equations. Other equations are available, that's a disclaimer. E equals mc squared is hugely important, yes, but honestly, how often do you annihilate matter to turn it into pure energy? Versus, how often do you make decisions that have to be based on incomplete information? All the time, surely. Shannon and the information theorists, they helped out. They showed that any state of knowledge or ignorance could be represented by numbers that you could put into that equation. And their insight that information is quantifiable stuff that you can measure as bits, bytes, and megabytes, that led to information technology, this stuff. So there's been a Bayesian revolution across many areas of science. You can see some there, economics, artificial intelligence, biostatistics. There's Bayesian agriculture, Bayesian medicine. Why is it important? Well, it's important whether you go to prison. The courts are becoming increasingly Bayesian. And before this was an issue, People who were innocent went to jail because DNA evidence was misinterpreted. It affects whether we torture. If somebody confesses under torture to terrorism, that's actually evidence against them being a terrorist. So as well as the moral arguments, there's a Bayesian argument against torture. Medicine as well. Medicines rapidly become more evidence-based and very Bayesian. And thank goodness, because without that, people were subjected to invasive procedures or biopsies um, that didn't actually tell you sometimes whether you had the disease or not. They were no use. Is Bayesianism common sense? Well, anything but. We know from psychology that people are just blind to reverse inference problems. They can draw the conclusions from their assumptions, but that's the wrong problem. That's direct. The psychologists came up with training regimes hoping to hone human intuition so it'd be more Bayesian and more accurate. Uh, it probably didn't look like this. This is just something I chose that looks more cool. <laughs> anyway, th these training regimes had almost no effect. Intuition resists this training. But maybe not all decisions have to be intuitive. 
Maybe sometimes when it's important, we can stop and think and work it out. Tom Bayes showed us how. Thank you, Tom Bayes, and thank you for listening.